Join me in singing hymn 644. Welcome all. While you're still standing, would you please turn to the people next to you and say hello, and if you find somebody new, really greet them. Thank you so much. A lot of fun, wasn't it? That's exciting stuff. I love that when we get to do that. Well, did anybody see anybody new next to them? Raise your hand if you saw somebody new. Right down here. Wonderful. So I'm going to ask the ushers in the back to maybe grab a mug and bring it up. Keep your hand raised over here in the green so we can do that. Okay, I, I see the ushers. They're digging around frantically for a mug. How many do we have that are new here? Raise your hands. Two, we've got two, exciting. We'll get a mug to you in just a moment, okay? Um, welcome everybody that's here. We're going to be talking a, a lot today about, about the Lord's Supper. So I want you to be contemplative and thinking about it as we go into our service today. And make sure to think about those around you that may not have visited us before. As you will, show them how we do it here, and you're all welcome to the table. Please stand for the call to worship. <laughs> Good morning. Come all, the table is served. Come all, the table is served. Come all, the table is served. Come all. The table is served. Come. Can we have the children come forward? Everybody may be seated. Yes, I did it backwards. 
We're going to have the candles lit in just a moment, okay, guys? We'll do that in a moment. Come on, children. <laughs> Hi, sit down. Come on up. Go, 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 come on. we keep getting bigger and bigger with our kids i'm gonna have to start moving down the aisle then that's gonna be fun hi everybody how's everybody this morning did y'all get up early to come in no some of you got up five minutes before church and raced here that's exciting you got up early i know i did that's awesome so this morning we're going to be talking a lot about the lord's supper about communion how many of you know about communion raise your hands if you've heard of communion before See, when you get a little bit older, they start serving communion, and you guys start showing up to it. It's a little different. In children's church, you're probably talking a little bit about it, too. But we talk about bread and juice, and we talk about how it's served for everybody. And when we do it, we do it in remembrance of Jesus. Now, what are some things that you can do to remember Jesus? What do you think? What's some things? Be nice. That's a good way to remember Jesus. Read the Bible. Wonderful. Say your prayers. Absolutely. Those are great ways to remember God and Jesus, right? And the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Part of what we do in Sunday school is tell you the stories about Jesus, but we all can take care of making sure that we remember Jesus every day by just doing simple things like saying our prayers and reading our Bibles and remembering those stories, right? So today, when you go forth from here, when you go someplace else, before you sit down to lunch or, or brunch or whatever you're going to eat, I want you to think about this. There's lots of people in lots of places that don't have the food that we have. There's lots of people in lots of places that don't get to come to church. So I want you to take just a moment and think about how wonderful it is to live here and be part of this world with your parents and everybody else that's in it, okay? And I want you to say a quick prayer for me and just think about Jesus when you do that, okay? Can you guys do that for me? Okay, we'll say a prayer now too, and we'll ask for Jesus to think about us too, okay? Okay, so join me in prayer. Thank you, God, for bringing these children together and for all of us here. Lift them as they go through their week and hold them in your precious hands so that they may be able to go forth and do your good works. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, guys, head on out. I'm keeping Ed on his toes today. I switched up the service. <laughs> Come on, guys. You're going to go that one? Okay. All right, now, candle lighters, are you ready back there? We've got the acolytes ready and all, all ready. Okay, guys, you can come forward as we sing.
Please join me in the unison prayer. Creator of all, your creation gathers today to rejoice in your love. Together, we reach out to those near and far and join in celebrating your supper. Together, we share in the remembrance of your Son and our Savior and lift in prayer those who are persecuted and forbidden from sharing with us. We too lift those who are starving, as there is enough food to feed, but for the world's greed. This is a celebration that we enjoy, and today we remember your son and those who have been punished by governments and tyranny. We ask that you guide us to be instruments of your healing for this planet. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We come to that time in our service when we lift up those who we are concerned about. And today when we pray, and as we pray, God, we come before you carrying the weight of the world. So many of us have loss in our lives, and God, we... We're dealing with our fear of the future without those that are with us, that have been with us. And we know that you're holding them comfortably in your hands and that, that there is this whole world that we live for. But we pray you are caring for those who are no longer with us. We additionally lift up those who are among us that are suffering that are hurt, that are dealing with treatments, that are going through care and therapy, and we know that you are with them as well, helping them along the way toward whatever end you see. And for those of us that carry and bear the weight of our families and friends who are troubled, in trouble, and hurting, we pray, Lord, that you lift us and keep us strong for those that are around us that need our help. But we also pray that you lift them and hold them in your hands and give them the strength to deal with everything in their lives as well. Today we especially ask for prayers as well for the families of Reverend Jean Hagerman and Reverend Lonnie Cook, both pastors in the Rocky Mountain Conference who died this week. And we ask too that you lift up Amy and Eric Strader, reverends both in the Rocky Mountain Conference whose daughter Nora was born last night at 157. We ask for prayers, too, for a youth director to come and give our children guidance and a children's coordinator to work within our programs to help us be the hands and feet of youth. And we ask continued strength for those in our congregation 
that they may be a reflection of you in this world. We ask all of these things in your name, and we pray to you as your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray by saying boldly, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew, chapter 26, verses 26 through 28. Y mientras comían, tomó Jesús el pan y bendijo, y lo partió, y dio sus discípulos, y dijo, Tomad, comed, esto es mi cuerpo. Y tomando a la copa, y habiendo dado gracias, les dio diciendo, Bebed de todos, porque esto es mi sangre de nuevo pacto, que por muchos es derramada para remisión de los pescados. Amén. may be seated. So this morning's message, it's not mine. I borrowed it. It's actually pretty old. It comes from the Seder feast. And actually, this would have been the song that we sang before we really started into all the prayers. Let my people go. It's a, it's a remembrance prayer. It's a song of joy and embracing what's going on in the world. And Jesus and the disciples would have sang this before their feast as well. Remembering Moses. Remembering leaving Egypt. Remembering the journey they're about to embark on. Remembering. Today is... World Communion Sunday. And with World Communion Sunday, the message today is about the world around us, not just here, but everywhere. And the world that Jesus opened the door to. Jesus interrupted the dinner and said a prayer. just as I'm going to interrupt the message and say a prayer. O Lord, may the meditations of my mouth and the inspirations of my lips be pleasing unto you. Amen. Now, it didn't seem too abrupt for you, 
But what Jesus would have done when he was saying grace, he would have said, there's a spot in the Seder. He would have said normally, remember those who have been tortured and murdered by the Romans. Tortured and murdered by the Romans. Instead, Jesus said something simple. He took bread, probably like this portion, a flatbread, something unleavened. And he lifted it up, and instead of saying, remember those that have been tortured and martyred before us, he would have said, remember me. Remember me. This is my body. This is my body. pretty powerful message that changed the world. This is my body. A piece of bread. Today's scripture probably sounded a bit foreign to some of you. Not to all. And I hope I didn't murder it too much. But today's scripture says it just as plain as I just said it. Esto es Mi cuerpo. This is my body. Now, in many traditions, this bread means so many different things. In some of the Orthodox traditions, the minister would walk up to the front and command Jesus come into this bread and and really physically believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is right there present with us. As Methodists, we believe that Christ is present in the world around us every day. The bread represents for us a symbol of Christ's life and of how we partake in part of that life. But the message goes further. This is my body. See, Jesus sat at that table, actually laid at the table. It wouldn't have been much bigger than this area up here. It was a small square room with a handful of other people, probably 20 people total in the room, packed in, tight, celebrating a big celebration feast. Now, Jesus knew this was his last one. But he said to them, as he said it, he said, this is my body, and he broke it. He said, each time you sit down to do this, you do this to remember me. See, he was talking further than just bread. He was talking about this body. Worldwide, the church represents the body of Christ. We've heard that before. But the body of Christ is broken. It's broken every day. And it's broken because of the way the world works. As I was researching this and putting this all together, a couple things came to mind that I thought were really interesting. First off, I thought we'd talk about hunger because I'm really passionate about feeding the hungry. But I was even more depressed this year when I sat down to look at the world's numbers on hunger. 16% of all Americans live in poverty. 16%. 17% of the world as a whole lives hungry. But this year, the World Commission on Health changed their numbers. This year, they looked at their numbers and said that's not exactly right. 16% of the world is dying for lack of food, period. Over 25% of the world is malnourished, meaning they don't have enough food to eat every day of the week, meaning they don't get enough of the basic nutrients to eat every day of the week. Every day. And most of these people are children and women. That's a pretty powerful statistic. But the one that sits on the page just opposite it is, I think, just as powerful. 80% of the world's resources are used up by 20% of the world's people. Now, that's not just the U.S. 
That's the U.S., Canada, and most of Europe. Eat 80% of the world's food. Actually, that's not true either. Of the 80% of the world's food that they purchase, that's probably a better word, 20% of that goes to waste. We waste more food every day, every day, than it would take to feed the other 26% of the world. That's pretty sobering. But I didn't come up here to just talk about our starving neighbors. We hear that every day. I came here to talk to you about something even greater than that. You know, there are places in the world that people are killed for a piece of bread because they wish to celebrate the Eucharist, to lift up Christ's body, to celebrate with all of us together as a community. And yet, tyranny and forces that are out there prevent them from having a simple Eucharistic meal together. So what am I really telling you today? What am I saying here? I mean, Christ said, this is my body which is given for you. What am I saying? Nothing new except this. Around the world, everywhere today, Christ's body is celebrated. We are lifting up something that is such a precious gift. A gift that is given to us freely. A remembrance of a life. Of a young man that changed the world by allowing everyone love and grace. Do we have work to do? Yes. We're called to continue God's work into the world. We're called to go and feed the hunger. We're called to go and push out tyranny wherever it is and still celebrate. Celebrate that we are a body of Christ, that together, worldwide, we represent something more powerful that can change the world. We are invited today to a table that is open for all persons, for all persons, regardless of race, regardless of religious perspectives. If you want to come here and have Eucharist with us, the Lord's Supper is for all regardless of sex or sexual orientation, regardless of anything, you're invited in a country that's free, in a place that experiences so minimal hunger. We are invited to openly enjoy the Lord's Supper. So today, There's a different treat for you and for me. This is World Communion Sunday. So we have rice cakes to represent those in the Asian countries that would be eating a rice bread. Tortillas for our South American and Latin friends. Flatbreads from the East. Rise. And wheat. We also have gluten-free for those of you that have gluten-free issues. There's something for everybody. Today we're lifting up something totally different. It may seem like a piece of bread, but it represents a community that is huge. People that we're joined with around the world. What a privilege. And what a grace. So today as you take this bread, Please remember, our charge is to remember that Christ gave this for us, gave us this community to share in, and gave us this bread for all. Amen.
the ushers please come forward? We're now asked to give of our gifts and talents. All please stand and join me in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, we lift up these gifts as representations of those gifts that you have given us. We pray that you look down upon us and these gifts, knowing that we are people of yours and that we are your bread. Amen. So on the night that he was betrayed, you may sit. They all gathered in a room. And as they gathered, Jesus lifted the bread. And he broke it. Maybe as simply as that. And he said, this is my body. Just as you are. This is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. And then likewise, after dinner, he brought forward the cup and he lifted it. And he said, this is my blood. This is the blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you. Each time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. So each time we sit and share in the cup and the bread, we remember the life of Christ and the charge that we are his bread, his body here on earth. The table is set. Come forward all and enjoy.
We don't get to eat from faith and fire very often, and it's so nice to be able to do that. The bread of life and the cup of salvation. Please join me in the benediction. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow gently at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. And until we meet again, may God hold you gently in the palm of his hand. Amen. Amen.